Good morning, you guys. Today is Monday morning. It's right around 9 a.m. here. We got a little bit of a late start to the day. Um, yesterday, we went on a hike with my parents. It wasn't a super long hike. <clears throat> it was just up behind their house, but it was like completely uphill the first half and it just wore the kids out. So they slept in a little bit today. Um, we just finished up with breakfast and we're about to get our school day started. Barrett just set the table for me. Um, and then for the rest of the day, I do have a couple things that I need to get done in the kitchen. I need to put dinner in the crock pot. Tonight we're going to have elk Philly, Philly cheese steak sandwiches. I thought about serving them like open faced on some homemade French bread. But then I thought if I'm going to be baking, why not just make homemade hoagie rolls? So I'm going to make some homemade hoagie rolls for dinner tonight. And then I also need to bake another loaf of bread. I made a video on that last week. I'll link it down below. Just a loaf of sandwich bread for tomorrow's dinner. We're going to have BLTs and then just so we can have sandwiches and toast for the rest of the week. So that's the stuff that I need to get done in the kitchen. And then later on today, the kids have jujitsu. So we have that. So um, yeah, I'm going to get started on the day. The kids are going to hop up to the table. I'm going to write out my to-do list while they get school started. And then I'll check in with you guys when we're done. So it's almost 11 o'clock. I'm here in the kitchen. I'm gonna get dinner in the crock pot. I'm not really following a recipe for this. I'm just gonna kind of wing it. I've actually never eaten Philly cheese steak, so I don't necessarily know how it's supposed to taste, um, but I think I can figure it out. So like I said, we're gonna uh, do elk Philly cheese steak. So I have all my ingredients set out. I'm gonna show you guys how I put this together in the crock pot. So these are the ingredients that I'm going to be using for my elk Philly cheese steaks. I have these four elk steaks right here. These were gifted to us by a friend. What I'm going to do first is I'm just going to season them a little bit with this steak blend and then I'm going to brown them up in a cast iron really quick. And then once that's done, I'm just going to add them to the crock pot with a little bit of beef broth, garlic, it's like minced garlic, and then some Worcestershire sauce. I'm not going to add all the peppers and onions right now because I don't want the peppers too soggy. So I'll add, I think I'm going to cook the meat with this small little tiny onion. And then right before I leave for jujitsu today, I'm going to add in um, this whole onion and this pepper. So I'm going to do a little bit of prep and get this ready to go in the crock pot. All right, I got my meat all browned up. I'm just gonna add it to the bottom of my crock pot. I'm gonna add up this sliced small onion. And this right here is my beef broth that I use to deglaze my cast iron pan. I'm not gonna add too much. 
that's probably about three quarters cup. Big forkful of minced garlic. Couple splashes of Worcestershire sauce. And I'm just gonna mix this up so the garlic's not all sitting in one spot. All right, and that's all I'm gonna add to the crock pot right now. I am gonna add my other peppers and onions right before we leave, that way they don't get too overcooked. But right now I'm gonna plug this in and I'm gonna cook it on low for the next eight hours. Okay, so now that dinner's in the crock pot, I need to move on to the next step, which is making the hoagie rolls. I found this recipe online. I'll link it down below. It's by the stay at home chef. I've used a lot of their recipes before. Um, that's where I got my like yeast roll recipe that I absolutely love. So I'm gonna give this recipe a try. It actually doesn't take too long. I think it says a total of an hour and 30 minutes. So I'm gonna get that to put together really quick so it has time for the first rise. And then after that, I need to get started on my sandwich bread. I probably won't film any of the sandwich bread just because I did a video on that last week. Um, so yeah, let me get all my supplies out and I'll show you guys how to put these hokey rolls together. All right guys, I have all my ingredients out and my stand mixer ready. The first thing you're gonna add to your stand mixer is one cup of warm milk. I'm using almond milk, that's why it looks a little different. I normally use non-milk, like non-dairy milk in all my bread recipes and they always turn out fine. And then to your warm milk, you're gonna add one tablespoon of instant dry yeast. Next is two tablespoons of white sugar. One teaspoon of salt. One large egg. three tablespoons of softened butter. I'm using dairy-free butter. Next, we're gonna add three cups of flour. Today, I'm gonna to be using bread flour just because when I was looking up recipes for hoagie rolls, a lot of the other recipes called for bread flour. So I'm just gonna use it. Hopefully, it, I'm sure it'll turn out fine, but I'm, this is the first time I've ever baked with bread flour. Uh-oh. I was too busy talking and not counting. I think that was three cups. I think that was three cups of flour. Let's mix it and see how it looks. Okay, in the recipe, it calls for three to four, three to four cups of flour. And it says that if your dough is sticky to keep adding flour in one fourth cup increments until it gets the right texture. It should be um, tacky but not sticky and mine is pretty sticky. So I'm going to add a little bit more flour. Okay, so my stand mixer was acting a little weird. I don't know. It was like struggling to mix this dough. So I'm just gonna um, hand knead it for the last couple minutes until it gets the right texture and then I can form it into a ball. Okay, so I'm done kneading the dough. I formed it into a ball. I'm gonna add this to a greased pan and then cover and let sit for one hour. So today's January 10th, which means that I have made it 10 days into the new year following my goal of baking all the items that my family needs. So far, I've tried some new recipes. Last week, I tried the homemade, tor homemade corn tortillas, which turned out really good. And then I made the sandwich bread, which we all loved. I'm going to make another loaf of that today. I made pancakes from scratch this weekend and then the hoagie rolls today. So um, I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, I know that I, ha I don't know if I talked about my sourdough starter that I was trying to make it. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I think I wasn't feeding it enough or maybe it was too warm. It did really good for the first like three or four days. And then it started um, forming the hooch on the top and then it got really, really smelly. And so I just scrapped that. I got rid of that. I'm going to start over again. I'm going to try a little bit of a different method where you cluster feed the start. So you feed it every 12 hours instead of every 24 hours. So I have not given up on that goal yet. Um, so, so far I'm feeling pretty good about my goals. Um, I'm really enjoying the extra time in the kitchen and baking. It's just something that I enjoy, but I have an hour until I have the next step with the bread. So until then, 
Um, I need to get the school table picked up. Well, the school table, it's our dining room table, but I need to get the dining room table picked up from school. I need to start a load of laundry. The kids are gonna unload the dishwasher for me. I need to get the dishwasher filled back up. I need to make lunch. And then by then it will probably be time to do the next step in our bread. So I will check in with you guys then. been an hour and my dough has doubled in size and what I'm gonna do next is I'm just going to oil my hands a little bit and then also oil my cutting board just so that it doesn't stick when we roll it out I'll plop this onto the rolling the rolling board the cutting board and then I'm gonna take my rolling pin and we're just gonna roll this out into a rectangle we're looking for about 24 inches wide and a quarter of an inch thick. So I think this is about as good as it's gonna get. I don't even think my cutting board is 24 inches wide. Um, so I'm not too worried about it being perfect. What we're gonna do is this is for four hoagie rolls. So I'm just gonna cut it into four semi even pieces. Definitely not even, but that's okay. Okay, so if you go online for this recipe, there's a video on how to make these rolls. Um, Cause I was a little confused on like the rolling part, um, but I watched her video and to see how she did it. So I'm just gonna fold my edges in because these aren't squared. So I'm gonna fold my edges in and then she just rolled it like this. And then you're gonna place on your baking sheet, seam side down. So you're just gonna do that for all four pieces. Okay, so I did transfer these to two separate cookie trays just because these have another half an hour rise, plus they're gonna grow a little bit when they bake. These are huge, I hope I'm doing this right. But next, this isn't in the recipe, um, but I'm going to just score the top of these. So the other thing that I'm going to do that's not in the recipe is I'm gonna add a little semolina onto the top. Um, normally when I buy hoagie rolls at the store, they have this, I think, I don't know. I'll probably just add it to two just in case it doesn't turn out very good. Okay, so I have scored the tops of my hoagie rolls. I put semolina on these two just to try it out. And the next step is, is we are going to cover these and let these rise for the next 30 minutes. I just pulled the hoagie rolls out of the oven. They are not very pretty. They're very misshapen in all different sizes, but that's okay. They smell good. They look good. Um, I'm going to let these cool and then I'll cover them before we head out for jujitsu. All right, guys, it is a little bit before 2.30 and we are heading out. We have our can return appointment at 3 o'clock and I need to pay my water bill. So we're going to head out. After that, we're going to head to jujitsu. So I'll check in with you guys when we get back home and it's time for dinner. Bye. All right, it's almost seven o'clock and we just got home. This is what it looks like. It smells really good in the house. When I put the peppers in, I made sure to put them, most of them up top so that they, they wouldn't get like cooked and mushy. Um, this meat is not falling apart, which is good. I wanted to be able to slice it up. So uh, what I'm gonna do really quick is I'm gonna pull this meat out, slice it, and then throw it back in. I also need to put some tots in the air fryer and cook up some veggies.
right, dinner is ready. This is how the Philly cheesesteak turned out. I think it looks super good, but we're gonna sit down really quick and eat and I'll let you guys know how it is. All right guys, it is almost eight o'clock and we just finished up with dinner. It was super good. Like I said before, I've never had Philly cheesesteak um, and Michael has, so he let me know that it wasn't necessarily the right flavors, but it was still really good, more like a hot beef sandwich. Um, the kids really liked it, I liked it. The hoagie rolls turned out really good. I'll definitely be keeping that recipe. The only thing that I need to keep note of is next time I need to make sure that the seams are sealed on the bottom um, because some of the bread I couldn't use for sandwiches. But other than that, we really liked it. I, um, I used the two regular and then two semolina. I did taste the one with the semolina and it was good. Um, so next time I'll be adding that on. But for right now, I'm gonna pick up the kitchen and get the kids to bed. So I'm gonna end the video for here tonight. I just want to say thank you guys for tagging along and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.